There's one big story right now that isn't being told nearly as much as it should be. And it's a very, very important one. If America is going to come out of this crisis at all. And I think about Howard Beale screaming in frustration from network. I don't know what to do about the crime and the depression and the economy. But you've got to get mad. Well, no, you've got to stop getting mad at each other. The story that is not being told nearly as much as it should is just how effective the manipulations we are being subjected to are right now at getting us at each other's throats. This is the tragedy. I don't know what to do about the virus or the, I mean, I can tell you, I mean, I know, I do know actually. <laughs> there are a lot of things that we could do. I know a lot of people will disagree with me on those things, but there's one thing that I hope you will not challenge me on, and it's this. If we are going to come out of this, we are going to have to learn to get along. And I say we as in we the people, not we the people trying to divide the rest of us to keep us easily divided and if not conquered, certainly manipulated and exploited. Yeah, we're going to have different things that we want to do about the virus and the economy and, and government. But we have to know who the enemy is. And it's not your fellow Americans. That is the most dangerous, destructive element of all of this being forced on us. Now, maybe... Maybe I should have been talking about this a long time ago. And I, I mean, I have been. But maybe maybe I wasn't as keenly aware of what was going on as some of you because you know, I don't get out much, at least not anymore. If I can't tour to talk about freedom, I'm going to be here in my own little personal paradise in Gardenia, my homestead. The Garden of Freedom. And, you know, I went out to, to support a friend in court earlier this week and was subjected to my first forehead infrared temperature scan. Forced to wear a mask to come into the building. Okay. <sighs> and again, with the masks, like, we know they're generally ineffective. You know, let's be honest, except in very limited situations. I mean, the science is pretty clear. Even Fauci, Dr. Fauci, Trump's right-hand man on the pandemic. Yeah, even he has said yeah, they're, they're limited applications. I mean, do you, you want to hear the science? The, uh, just to be exactly, what did Fauci say? There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. While masks may block some droplets, they do not provide the level of protection people think they do. Wearing a mask may also have unintended consequences. People who wear masks tend to touch their faces more often to adjust them, which can spread uh, germs from their hands. Now, even with all of that, I get it. Some people have been frightened into wearing masks while driving by themselves. Some business owners think that they have to require masks to put customers at ease, and at some in some places they do. And so my my position on the mask is, you know, I, I'll 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 carry one. I will never wear it unless asked. And if I'm asked politely, I'll put it on. And if I'm asked rudely, I'll just freaking leave. So where am I getting this? There's a new there's a new trend among viral videos on on social media now it's not just bad cop porn getting out there there's oh there's plenty of that we got some of that too but no the new trend in videos are conflicts over masks 
And that's what people are fighting over. CJ, if you would, please, our first video that I want to show to portray this comes from Walmart. Yeah, surprise, surprise. This is from, from Matt Walsh blog on Twitter. And he his caption this is, this guy is an absolute hero. You people are like monkeys falling out of a tree. All right, so CJ, if you just please play the first 30 seconds or so of this with the audio. This is too rich. All to wear a mask, and look at you, not wearing a mask. Oh dear! I wear a mask to protect myself. It's a fucking political. It's unbelievable. Now you have accosted me in this store. It's not a wall that I've got to wear a mask. Not wearing a mask. And if you're gonna keep this up, maybe we'll get the police department in here. Hey mom, what'd you call nine one one then? Yeah, yeah. Oh God, another one. You people are like monkeys falling out of a tree. No, you're the monkey that has it. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell Dragging you Dragging those knuckles that you've not my ass. Okay, how's that grab you? Ever heard you of Darwinism? Evolution? Evolve, mister. Me? Why don't you burn something down? Why don't you go back to where you were? Yeah. Why don't you need to evolve her? Or something. You, know? you must be the one who's... Are you burning crosses? Are oh, you burning yeah. crosses? You people are fucking idiots, man. You no, you're the idiot. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you're <coughs> just playing your life on a freaking computer. You have no life, so this is what your phone. life is? Dude, I'm not doing my shopping. Unbelievable. Uh, you're unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I bet you wouldn't wear Good luck with the virus. Good luck with the virus. Your whole family tree is getting cut off at its roots. Good luck, Now, this is just totally backwards from how things were just, just months ago. Right? I know, I, in terms of this guy's case, is he a hero? I yeah, good for him. Absolutely standing up, but it's kind of missing the point, right? Why why is this conversation happening in the first place? And and why why is it always escalating? At least well, we see the, the the good videos where people really do the right thing and de-escalate. Those don't go viral, right? You know, when when this guy the, the version of this guy says, oh, "How you doing, ma'am?" And you know, if, if instead of responding with hostility I, I mean I totally understand this I mean you, you, someone comes up to you with a, with a phone in your face well well and, and I love one of, the, one of the observations about this guy overweight dude t-shirt tucked in to jean shorts white socks showing over sneakers with a shopping list probably from his wife. Typical American dad going out, getting stuff at Walmart. And this is this is part of the experience now. That This is part of the experience. If you're this guy going to Walmart, this is what you have to deal with. Now, where is this? I don't know. It's definitely not in Prescott, Arizona, where we were in Walmart Monday. And things were just weird, but things were pretty chill, right? You know, there weren't uh, any like confrontations like this. There were half the customers walking around without masks, not making a big deal out of it. But just months ago, CJ, if you would please pull up the video that Jim shared with us this morning, this is just how much of reversal we have seen. Go ahead and roll, roll tape. tape. Right. Right. So what law have I broken? No, hold on, hold on. What law have I broken? Well, first of all, wearing a, wearing a mask in public is something of concern, okay? So it, it, it's, it's, classic, okay. it's a classic felony. Wearing a there's, mask, there's certain, please certain watch what you guys are saying. Wait, wearing a mask in public. Means, so there are saying. millions okay. of people that wear a mask because I, of their I, religion belief. I agree. I agree. And are you trying to yeah. tell me that that is something as, suspicious? As we, as we talked about before, though, you said you're not wearing that for, for religious reasons, I didn't, reasons, I didn't say, I, all I said, sir, is I'm making a comparison. That's all I'm doing. He's okay. saying that I can't wear a mask in public. I made a comparison that people do wear a mask in public. So are you stopping them on the side of the road, asking them for their well, ID? Because that's part of the religious belief. Okay, so. Which is not part of your religious belief. Okay, you so. No, 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 I did not say. I have it all on camera. We can actually rewind that. All I'm saying, sir, is I don't have to give any of my ID to you guys. I asked you guys politely if I'm committing a crime. You guys said no, correct? So then when I'm trying to walk, I can't leave. I don't understand, sir. Because we need to find out who you are okay. before you can get free to go. And, all right, so four minutes ago, I said this is going to be a circular conversation, right? 
So you're not you're not. Uh, that's, 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 I, mean, I, mean, I just I mean, made the point here. We need to know who you are before we can let you leave. And this is just uh, police harassment. The thing is, what are they harassing him about? Wearing a mask in public, not not wearing a mask in public, like you got harassed with recently. But no, for wearing a mask in public. Remember, just a few months ago. Concealing your identity in public was an enforced victimless crime in a lot of parts of America, where if cops saw someone walking around in public with a mask on, that's what happens. Now, in contrast, CJ, if you would pull up the next video, please. This is from our friend Helen Yaple, one of our caretakers here at the Garden of Freedom. And she did a, a great rant about this yesterday. Just play the first, just the first minute of this, please, CJ. Let's record now. Please leave the fucking store. Oh, really? Wow. Okay, that's harassment. I'm spying charges. Please leave. That's your name? There you go. Nice. Nice. That's okay. I'm actually not. So you guys, she just, she just almost physically threatened me. So, she, so. I'm sorry, but under the Colorado Revised State Law, uh, you actually, there's no grounds. No. You can't deny me service. You can't trespass. That's okay, because I'm gonna show the cops the law. It doesn't matter. No, nope, sorry, it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Okay. I'll wait for the cops to get here. That's okay. I'm just going to wait till the cops get here. I'll just wait for the cops to get here. Why don't you wait for them outside? Ron. I'm not. I'm going to wait right here. So where I this video, <clears throat> this confrontation at a liquor store turns into actually the cops getting called. Now, as, as Helen pointed out so eloquently yesterday, everybody's wrong. This is all seen. They're all wrong. America has been led to, to act like a bunch of freaking morons fighting with each other. Now, the way this played out, the woman was recording as she was getting harassed. I, I don't know what led up to this. But she could have stayed calm. She could have de-escalated. She could have simply said, hey, do you know that some people have health conditions uh, that make it uh, unadvisable for them to wear a mask? <clears throat> you know, that there are people who are being told that they should not wear masks by their doctors because it would be bad for them and they should still be able to go out in public. And, you know, did, did you know that there are people who have gotten the virus? and then gotten over it and have antibodies and can now neither get it nor transmit it, and there's no reason for them to wear a mask. And you could have, she could have said this calmly, quietly taking advantage of the opportunity again to educate people, to de-escalate, to, to just keep in mind that you know, we're all human beings. We all just want to get along. We all just want to get our needs met. Why? Why? Well, CJ, if you would, I, we got from our Adam versus the Man Telegram group, the Adam versus the Man Producers Club Telegram group, this image from our friend Kim, who's coming out to Arizona from Pennsylvania. She's in Colorado right now. And she got an actual alert on her phone. And I know it's not much. I mean, you're seeing this like, and, and, and you know, what does it say here? Public safety alert. A statewide mandatory mask order is now in effect for Colorado. But what does that even mean? I have to wear it all like 24-7? I have to wear a mask? I have to cover my face? And then you go, well, there, there are weirder rules that have been instated by government with corona as the excuse. The excuse is a virus with a lower mortality rate than trying to spend a counterfeit $20 bill in Minneapolis. Oh, and if you don't think that's part of it, oh yeah. 
hey, you know, it wasn't enough to set mask wearers against non-mask wearers. Let's set black against white. Let's cause the whole talk about reparations now. And, and there are, you know, the, and, and, you know, the whole thing about police even. Are you pro-police or anti-police? Let's just cause more division. In Asheville, just as one example, North Carolina, there was a bill for reparations. Now, it's fake reparations, really. Like, we, yeah, politicians grandstanding, doing something that sort of smells a little bit like reparations. And they're going, oh, look, we got reparations here. We, look at how woke we are in Asheville. You should reelect us. Uh, no, I mean, it's kind of like, like fake decrim. Like, well, we decriminalized cannabis, but we're still going to arrest you for it. It's just it's going to be a ticket now. Well, then it's still criminal. You're still gonna, and what you're doing is criminal. You're stopping people for victimless crimes, obviously. So why not have this division where instead of arguing about who really has all of the profits from slavery and everything else, you think about like what did they do with with with, with the Civil War, right? They they abolished slavery and then said you know what hey we'll just make every american a slave we'll just we'll get the income tax we'll get the federal reserve system we'll just be able to tax everybody who's using u.s dollars yeah sure why not and and it's it's kind of a an exaggeration i suppose of you know and but you know if if a slave is someone who is you know, that you know the, the owner of that slave gets all of their income. Are, are they still a slave if the owner gives them back 10% of their income, lets them keep 10%? So oh, you can do what you want with this 10% of your income. I'd say that person is still a slave. Well, what happens if they let you keep 20% of your income? Are, are you not a slave at that point? How about if they let you keep 50% of your income but they take the other, and that's what it is in America today. The average working American is working for government half the year when you add up all the fees, fines, hidden taxes. The average working American is working for government half the freaking year. Oh, but that's okay. You're only half a slave. Well, you think about it from the perspective of the super class, the real string pullers and engineers of society. Would you rather have this small population in America, the blacks, enslaved fully or have every working american half enslaved kind of makes you realize who the real enemy is here right and even today you know they are letting people out of prisons for reasons of avoiding the coronavirus and I think, well that's a good thing you know let people out and this is great for those people who you know, there are people who have who were serving and technically still are serving life sentences who are now out on house arrest. What a mind frick that must be. Wow, I'm geez. I thought I was gonna die in this jail cell and now I'm at home, but I'm forced to stay at home or I get arrested and they take me back to jail. Uh, what did, what happens at that point? What's the point of people being locked up from the perspective of the super class? It's not public safety. They're not locking up pot smokers and testing drugs in crime labs while letting rape test kits go neglected in the interest of public safety. No, they don't. What, what, what's the point of this? It's more control and exploitation, right? Well, I might as well you know, release everybody from jail as long as we can turn America into one big open-air prison, or if you leave your cell, you have to follow really strange rules like wearing a mask and staying six feet apart or be in shackles, as was my case when I was incarcerated in D.C. And the whole fight over money thing, the forced unemployment crisis that we're experiencing has created a dependence on government and a desperation like never before. So one more story I wanna share with this, the Sun headline, get money, cops hunt bank robber who told Teller he didn't get COVID stimulus check and would start shooting if he didn't get cash. 
<coughs> now, I know this is not the typical example of what happens when someone feels left out of the current welfare system of special coronaphobia relief, right? But Corona is being used as an excuse for people to do pretty much whatever they want. Hey, did you want to sit at home and be on welfare and not be thought of as a worthless slob? Hey, guess what? You can just use Corona as the excuse to justify it. Now, hey, did you want to add $9 trillion of liquidity to the economy uh, as a member of Congress or the Federal Reserve so that you could you know, rip off Americans that much more than ever before? Cool. You can just use Corona as the excuse. Did you want to rob a bank? Well, hey, guess what? You can tell people that you didn't get your $1,200 stimulus, so you're here to take it. <laughs> All right. The next story from the the hour, uh, I'm sorry, we'll go said to uh, Yahoo from AFP. California man accused of gambling away COVID relief funds in Vegas. A California man was arrested and ordered held without bond on Thursday for fraudulently obtaining some $9 million in coronavirus relief funds and using some of the money to gamble in Vegas. Now, this is one of those stories where you want to be pissed off at this dude, right? He took money that the government was going to give to people for relief and used it to gamble. And this is just more division, right? Because you think not only is this guy a piece of crap, but if you're one of the ones who's lucky enough to, to still have a job, guess what? You're still seen withholding taken out of your paycheck. And part of you knows this is where it's going. And they don't want you to be upset about the fact that banks are going to make $18 billion just in processing fees from the loans being given by government. No, be mad that this, and, and $9 million, shit, $9 million. Do you know what I could do with $9 million? Do you know how many lives I could save or improve or just how much relief for people who are struggling right now that $9 million represents? And to even answer that question is to miss the point. Because it's it, it's so minuscule. And nine, nine billion. Eighteen billion. You know, it's, it's, the banks are going to make $18 billion. 18 billion. What's the total in the loans? 640 something billion. What's the total government borrowing? Somewhere north of nine trillion dollars. And th this is what they want you to be upset about. But there's a worse fear right now. And it's tempting to lump in the police is part of the enemy because they are enforcing the will of politicians in a way that is at odds with freedom and, and individual rights. They are they are hurting people because they, 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 they are doing criminal things every day. They're arresting people for victimless crimes. And it's worse now. TheHour.com reports, it was like being preyed upon federal officers in unmarked vans detained Portland protesters when several men in green military fatigues and generic police patches sprang out of an unmarked gray minivan in front of Mark Pettibone in the hour, early hours of Wednesday morning. His first instinct was to run. He did not know whether the men were police or Far-right extremists who frequently don military-like outfits and harass, harass left-leaning protesters in Portland, Oregon. The 29-year-old resident said he made it about half a block before he realized there would be no escape. Then he sank to his knees, hands in the air. I was terrified. It seemed like it was out of a horror sci-fi, like a Philip K. Dick novel. It was like being preyed upon. 
He was detained and searched. One man asked him if he had any weapons. He did not. They drove him to the federal courthouse and placed him in a holding cell. Two officers eventually returned to read his Miranda rights and ask if he would waive those rights to answer a few questions. He did not. And almost as suddenly as they had grabbed him off the street, the men let him go. Pettibone still does not know who arrested him or whether what happened to him legally qualifies as an arrest. And we have more footage of this. If you if you don't believe this, go ahead, CJ, pull up the next link from Twitter from the Sparrow Project, who's uh, Sparrow Media, at Sparrow Media on Twitter. And there's a, a 14 second video clip here, thank you. And this is the citizen following these guys is asking them to identify themselves. And they don't, they just ignore this woman recording and speed like what kind of cowardly crap is this and again it's tempting to think well it's the people versus government and that includes the police that includes people like that commando police now on the streets of america martial law yeah this, we're living under martial law right now As if the economic frustrations weren't sufficient, now you have to be scared to go out in public. This could happen to anybody, at any time, at any street, anywhere in America right now. Just the reality we face. Now, oh, you're being paranoid. Well, it's happening. No. For all the times that you called me paranoid years ago, no, no, no. I was the one being realistic. All y'all trash talkers and trolls on the internet say, no, no, you, your, your fear of the police state is unwarranted. I hope you're eating a lot of humble pie right now. And on top of the economic desperation and the police situation desperation, the fear of all of that, on top of all of this, there's a cloud of lies, distortion, misinformation from people who we know are trying to profit from this period of fear one way or another. And as Mark Twain said, a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is just putting on its shoes. And you notice how the, the justification for all this is, is switched from flattening the curve to beating the virus entirely when did when did when this came out when this became a publicly discussed thing it wasn't oh yeah this is so bad we have to we can't we have to stop everything else in society shut down the economy until we can defeat this virus no it was let's flatten the curve curve has been flattened if you believe the lies the numbers the statistics but even i, I don't believe it ever was spiking up the way they said it was in the first place and it's this whole dying from versus dying with. We brought you this story about a month ago when we saw the first cases emerging. And this was after so many deaths had already been reported. In Seattle was the first major story where the absurd case of a man who died from a gunshot wound to the head was reported as having died from corona. Because they, they can't get enough test kids out there to the people who are alive but they can test every dead body that comes into every morgue in America. And regardless of the actual cause of death, if they died with corona, they're going to mark it as a coronavirus death. So the media can then make the honest mistake of, oh, well, we didn't know it was died with corona. We thought it was died from corona. So we just reported that as a coronavirus death, and we scared the hell out of everybody. And now everybody's at each other's throats and desperate. And even now, I told you this from before. The cure is going to be worse than the disease. And now we have statistics that make it irrefutable. We have testimony that makes it undeniable. In some places, we can be certain already. There are more people dying from suicide than from the virus. And we've seen other cases of this too. 
There is now a hospital in Texas being sued by a family because the hospital reported a coronavirus death for someone who had died in a car accident. Sometimes it takes a while for the truth to come out. Just a fun little other note about this to show you how deep the deception is right now. This is from the Washington Examiner. Jerry Falwell's Liberty University slaps New York Times with $10 million suit for made-up COVID-19 story. And of course, you're thinking, all right, we're really, they, they just make it up? Yeah. Virginia's conservative Liberty University today filed a $10 million defamation suit against the embattled New York Times for a made-up and damaging story that falsely charged that students returning from spring break became infected with the coronavirus because the school stayed open. In a 100-page suit with exhibits filed in Virginia's Lynchburg court, the 49-year-old school also charged the New York Times reporter Elizabeth Williamson and photographer Julia Rendleman ignored no trespassing signs to tour the campus at a time when the school was trying to keep outsiders, keep out outsiders who could potentially be affected with COVID-19. This is, this, this is the mainstream media that we have today. They're willing to lie and trespass in order to get, and, it, and like, I'm not defending, you know, what is Liberty University, Jerry Fall, it's not, <clears throat> it's not really about freedom. The long thread suit stems from a March 29 viral story that suggested several students were infected after returning from spring break. In fact, no student, staffer, or faculty member on campus was or became infected. The story was never retracted despite pleas from Liberty. As the suit says, none of this was true. There was never an on-campus student diagnosed with COVID-19. The only actual viral element of this narrative that existed was the intense viral internet attention it generated for the New York Times website and for those paying to advertise on that website. Now, if you don't think that's insidious enough, we go now to ABC News. Utah public hearings on schools dismissed after angry parents pack room without masks. Some parents objected to school kids wearing masks. I love this photo, too. All these parents, you tell they're about to rip some bureaucrats' heads off. Tensions flared at a public hearing in Utah over the state's mask mandate for school children after several parents defied orders by packing the room without face coverings. The parents, some of whom carried signs condemning face masks, failed to sit in the marked seats and booed at the Utah County officials Wednesday night. The hearing was held over a letter by Utah County Commissioner Bill Lee, which asked Governor Gary Herbert to waive his requirement that kindergarten to 12th grade students wear a mask when schools reopen. You're really going to do this to your kids? Do you see what it's doing to the rest of America? But yeah, of course, a little background on America's school system. What do we have here? We have forced indoctrination centers masquerading as schools where children are never taught to think outside of the box. They are taught what to think, not how to think. They are sat in cemetery row seating. Yeah, that's what they call it. To be lectured, to have facts forced into their heads, to be taught how to be a good cog in the machine, to be conditioned, to be obedient wage slaves so that when they turn 18 and are slapped with hundreds of thousands of dollars, who knows, maybe now in the millions of dollars for their share of the national debt, that they will be good, little, unquestioning, obedient wage slaves wearing their little slave muzzles over their faces just to go to school. And they won't question the system. They will be easily misled and manipulated. Now, on top of all of this, ABC News is also reporting 64% distrust Trump on coronavirus pandemic approval declines as cases grow. 
Now, is it because the cases are growing or because the lies are growing? You know, the German quote, uh, Goering, the propagandist, tell a lie, tell it big enough and eventually people will believe it. Now, approval declines as cases grow. Right there in that headline is embedded a very dangerous insinuation that they don't have proof of. That Americans are upset with Donald Trump because the virus is getting worse. Right. No. No, 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 no. Of all of the complaints that I have heard from everybody and seen in videos, in person, whatever, I might get the virus because Trump didn't get enough test kits out there and didn't shut things down soon enough. No, I don't hear that. I hear, man, it really sucks to be out of work. I hear, man, it really sucks to be broke. I hear, man, I'm really just afraid of leaving the house now because I might get arrested for some nonsense. I mean, I'm, I'm afraid of my fellow Americans. Like, no, that's, and you know what the, the poll should have been or what the headline should have been here? Instead of 64% distrust Trump on coronavirus pandemic, it should have been shockingly maddeningly, bafflingly, 36% of Americans still trust Trump. Who are those 36% of Americans who are paying so little attention that when someone says, hey, do you trust Donald Trump about the coronavirus? They don't go, well, which one? Do, do I trust the version of him that said it was no big deal and was under control? Or do I trust the him that, that says, uh, yeah, we have to have a national state of emergency? Do I trust the Trump that says, I, I don't really need to wear a mask? Or the Trump who now today is wearing a mask? From the highest level of government, we see these glaring contradictions. And what I'm reminded of in this is that there's a really important idea to keep in mind. War is when the government tells you who the enemy is. Revolution is when you figure it out for yourself. If the troops defended freedom, they would attack the government. Right now, the government wants you to believe that the virus is the enemy. And because the virus is the enemy, any American in your life who doesn't act with absolute ruthlessness against this common enemy of the virus is siding with the enemy themselves. If you don't wear a mask in my store, you are an enemy combatant. We have to bump shopping carts into you and call the police on you and ridicule you on social media. <laughs> oh, geez. Oh, geez. This is what it's come to, huh? No. No, no, no. Really, the most important idea in all of this comes from my favorite quote from the revolution, Benjamin Franklin. If we do not hang together, surely we will all hang separately. And I don't know if we're going to come out of this. I cannot predict exactly how we are going to come out of this. But I can tell you that if we can't all just get along and learn to hang together against the real enemy, we might never come out of this.
So please, remember the love. Remember what unites us as Americans, as human beings. And do not allow them to take your emotional sovereignty, to make you angry, to make you afraid, to make you distrustful. Not of government. You should completely distrust government and the mainstream media. But of your fellow Americans, do not let them take that from you. That love that is essential in the heart of every human being. Please, can't we all just get along? <laughs>